Hello YouTube. How are we doing today? So, this is my first live stream with actual commentary. Finally got my microphone issues fixed. Uh, anybody that's here with me, if you would, just let me know how the audio is. Can you hear me okay? Is it choppy? Is there background noise? Anything like that? Just let me know and I'll try to fix it uh, before we really get into the meat and potatoes here. What I'm doing today is the best start for the early game. This is how I always get started. So I'm going to be showing some pretty advanced stuff in here, but it's stuff that anybody can do just dropping into the game. Uh, this is not a new game plus. It's just a fresh start, starting off with nothing. Uh, hey, thanks a lot, brother. I appreciate that. I was a little bit worried about the audio quality. I had some trouble, trouble in my last video that I did. Okay, so what I'm doing here, I have only got to the part where you first get your bike. That's all I've done is gone and picked up my bike. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, I'm here at the O'Leary Mountain Safe House. This is where it's kind of your starting little area where you can come and get supplies and get fuel and stuff. Uh, I have only made it as far as level two. You can see on my skills screen here that I am only level two, so I'm not very far into the game at all. In fact, all I've done is just this little, the introduction, the tutorial, basically. I got as far as Copeland's camp, picked up my bike, and came right back to O'Leary Mountain to make this save game so I could get started with a fresh save. Uh, so what we're gonna do to get started the very first thing I do as soon as I get my bike, if you put your map cursor just above the fuel symbol here at O'Leary Mountain Safe House, and you move your map cursor over to the right, you'll end up right here on this broken bridge. And if you move north, here's the river that the bridge goes over, and here's a power plant. The very first place I'm going is this power plant. I'm just gonna drive straight there I'm going to avoid combat as much as possible. Now, if there's any raiders, freaks, wolves, anything, I'm just going to dodge them. I'm going to stay away from them as best I am able right now. Because all I have is my crappy early game weapons, my crappy early game bike, no skills, no nothing. So I'm just going to play it safe and go get geared up. Okay, so one thing you want to look for is these log piles and this rolled over truck looking over this logging camp. You know you're going the right way when you see that. You stay to the left over here. Okay, dodge the it. rocks and trees. This camp is gonna be crawling. Look for this power uh, yeah, relay yeah, tower here. Out here Deke, it'll pull all of them down on and you. the the low boulder just, here beside the, the electrical lines. The weapons that I currently have is just the crossbow. Uh, here, I'll actually show you what I've got. This is the just the basic baseball bat, basic crossbow, and this crappy little rifle that I picked up uh, off of a raider. And, of course, the starting pistol. And that's it. So, when you get to this pile of rocks here, just to the left of it, stop here and save your game. Because there will probably be some raiders over here to your left. If you see this blue car, there is an ambush waiting for you. You can actually see one of the raiders crouching down behind the vehicle right there. So before you go to the power station to pick up your loot, go and look for this little blue car. If the blue car is there, you're about to get ambushed. I like to launch a counter ambush. And I love this because this is exactly what Deacon would do. Being former military, he's going to recon the area, find resistance, and launch a counter ambush and sneak up on them instead. So, I mean, it's just perfect. It fits with the world, the lore behind everything. So, you're going to sneak over here, right here at this little bend in the road where you have a clearing where you can see the power plant. Pop into photo mode. Use your photo mode as a tactical camera. I can actually see over this hill, I can see there's a sniper right there by that rock in the red and black flannel. 
There's a green jacket bandit down there by the car. If you look a little further down by the tree and the low flat rock, you can see some more raiders down there. So I already have a pretty good idea of where everybody is at. So I'm going to attempt to sneak up on the sniper right here. Take them out first. Got it. If you're careful, you can get the one over here by the car. Sometimes you can't get them. They'll see you. Okay, here we go. Yeah, maybe? Sweet. All right, now time to go loud. So I'm going to take the silencer off of my pistol to preserve the silencer since we're already in combat. There's no need to waste your silencer. All right, the idea here is to line up your shot, let them walk into it. Doesn't work every time, but it helps. Line up the shot, let them walk into it. Line up the shot, let them walk into it. Bam. Simple. Okay, now, pick up all the goodies. Sometimes you will actually get good stuff off of these raiders. Like, I just got a med kit. That's awesome. Uh, sometimes you'll get grenades, attractors, pipe bombs, things like that, and that's always handy, too. Okay, let's see what this last one had. Oh, a frag grenade. Outstanding. Okay, now that you have cleared this ambush and you haven't died, I'm going to run back over to the bike and save my game again real quick. Then we'll move down to the uh, power station, the uh, electric plant down there, and we'll get our loot. <laughs> Poor little early game deacon. He doesn't have any stamina. Okay, so I walked five steps and didn't die. Save your game. Now we're going to head down here to the electric plant. All right. Now, one pro tip here that will serve you well, always park your bike in a position where you can leave quickly and easily if you have to. I just got off the bike, saved my game. All right, these... Tow trucks, wrecker truck, tow truck, whatever you want to call it, will always have a fuel can on them. Grab your fuel can, top off your tank. Fuel management is extremely important in the early game. It's something you have to stay on top of constantly. So just keep your tank fueled up. Save your game. Where we're headed is the top of this little platform up here. We're going to run up here and we're going to grab some free loot. Everybody loves free loot, right? All right, almost there. Okay, get to the top of the tower. There's all kinds of goodies up here. What's this? Is this actual military-grade explosives? Outstanding. Okay, and you also have a flashbang and a frag grenade. Those are going to come in handy. You have a med kit if you need it. You also have a slightly better melee weapon. It does better damage. And we have a pipe bomb and an attractor bomb. If you're not familiar with attractor bombs, what they will do... I know, right? Free stuff that you can't even get this at this point in the game normally. Uh, but these attractor bombs, if you're not familiar with them, they will make noise, draw the freaks, and then blow up. Okay, you also have a slightly better uh, rifle here. You can see the damage is a little bit higher and the rate of fire is a little bit higher. So I'm going to snag that, snag a little ammo for it. Be aware, those green ammo tins do not respawn. To my knowledge, they do not ever respawn. Uh, so just be aware of that when you pick up an ammo tin. Hey, thanks. Uh, you know what? I've got a Witcher 3 video on my site. Uh, on my channel, rather. I have uh, one that's a, a Gwent tutorial, of course. I mean, what else would you do if you're playing The Witcher 3 aside from play some Gwent? But uh, yeah, yeah, I'll be planning. Uh, I'm planning to cover some other games in the future, of course. So uh, here we are. We've only been to one of these loot locations, and we have already got two frag grenades, two pipe bombs, actual military-grade proximity mine, We've got an attractor bomb, and we've got a flashbang, 
Plus, we've picked up a better rifle, and we've picked up a better melee weapon. So just from coming to this one little loot location over here, this power plant, right here next to O'Leary Mountain Safe House, just by coming here once, we've already got a ton of gear. It's got you off to a much better start. Now, where you want to go next, this is your next loot location. You're going to go ahead and head to this story mission, Bugged the Hell Out. You're going to come over here. There's a Nero facility. We're going to come over here and unlock this Nero facility. And we're going to loot this little shack. You can just barely see this shack on the edge of the fog there. That has an item. It's got another one of those military proximity bombs. So we're going to go down there and grab that too while we're doing the story mission. All right. Just going to go ahead and follow the yellow line. Yellow markers always indicate main story missions. Uh, these are, you know, unskippable missions that are required to move the story forward. All right, and again, if there's, we're going to avoid combat as best we can. It's the early game. I've still got really crappy weapons. I'm really not looking for a fight right now. I'm just looking to get myself set up for the best possible start. Once I unlock some better weapons, then we'll get to some serious killing. Uh-oh. More combat. Yep. Yeah. Gonna dodge these guys. Okay, we're getting there. I keep forgetting just how slow this bike is in the early game. I mean, once you get it upgraded a little bit, it's, it's so much better. It's actually kind of tough to deal with in the early game, but that's part of it. You know, you start off kind of weak and you have to build your way up. Well, it is what it is. All right, so right before you get to this Nero facility, you hang a little right right here. And you can go down this little valley there. It's actually faster and easier to just run the bike around the corner. You brake kind of hard because this is a tight turn. And again, try to park your bike in a position where you can make a quick and easy getaway later. All right, and since I stepped off the bike and didn't die, I'm going to save my game. You pop into this little shack here. Yeah, the beginning grind is, it's really something else. Uh, but you have another one of those military-grade proximity mines here. And you have a ready-made Molotov. This You just pick it up and it's ready to be used. You don't even have to craft it. It's just there. Um, you have some crafting materials here. This corpse usually has something on it. Beer bottle. Hmm. Drunken corpse. Outstanding. Okay, and you have a baseball bat and another med kit there if you need it. So by going to these locations, you can keep yourself full on uh, items and bombs and stuff, but you can also keep your health full with it uh, because we'll be picking up plenty of med kits from these types of locations. And these locations are scattered throughout the entire game. They're all over the place. All right, so looks like one has already seen us. Nothing we can do about that. Let's go ahead and ruin his day. I, whoop, dodge, okay. I am maxed out on Molotovs because in that first mission where you and Boozer go through that tunnel, there's actually plenty of stuff in there. Hey, right on. Thanks, brother. I appreciate that. Nice to see you popping in, bro. All right. So, yeah, I have plenty of Molotovs just because I, I haven't really used that many yet. I haven't been burning out any nest. Uh, all right, so we're going to try to come in here. Uh, so much for stealth. Okay, let's ruin this guy's day. Sir, I said I was going to ruin your day. Please stop hitting me. Dodge. All right. Had enough of your noise, sir. All right, what else we got? Okay. Okay. Now, the pro tip here, use your photo mode. Pan, it, pan the camera out, move it around. You can locate enemies with this. Okay, 
Oh, shoot, he's up here on the roof with me. Well, I'm glad I looked. Okay. Uh, maybe? Nope. No stealth. Asshole. Alright. Now, there is another reason I like to come to this facility straight away. Not only is it a required story mission, but right here in this little nook between the buildings... Hey, what's up, brother? How you doing? Right here in between these buildings is the best melee weapon that you can get in the early game. The Fire Axe. Take a look at the damage over there. The damage is extremely high. Durability is really low, but that's okay. Because the damage is very high, it takes fewer hits to make a kill. So you're not using as much durability, right? Hey, thank you. Nice to see you. Okay, so it looks like there's at least one more. Where's he at? Let's find. Oh, no need to find them. Okay, they're right there. Coming to get you. And good night. All right. So, these Nero facilities. In order to unlock these facilities and get the loot inside of them, you first have to find the generator. The generators can always be identified by a branch in the power lines. There will always be a branch of power lines right over the generator. Now, there may be several branches in the line, but one of them will be your generator. And you have to disable these speakers, or when you turn on the power, the speakers start going off. So if you want to play stealthy and play it safe, disable all the speakers. The best way to find the speakers is to follow the power lines. If you follow each branch in the line, you can see it branches off to this light pole over here, no speaker. The line branches off to this light pole over here and terminates at this pole. No speaker here. Okay, so we're going to explore another branch in the line. It goes to this building, goes over here to this corner. Ah, there's another speaker and another branch in the lines. So, we'll check this part of the line. No speaker there. Check this part of the line. No speaker there. And you got one more that goes down the middle to right here. And this little guard shack over here, you can clearly see that speaker has already been disabled. So that's every branch in the line. That's all the speakers. Now, you got to grab a fuel can and fill up the generator. These tow trucks, tow truck, wrecker truck, whatever you want to call them, they always have a little red fuel can. So since I've got a can of fuel in my hand, first thing I'm going to do is fill up my bike. Always keep your bike topped off. All right, bike's topped off. You go fill up the generator. Got it. All right. Now, we'll fire up the generator here. You'll know... You'll know if you... Uh, <laughs> you'll know if you forgot any speakers because it will show on your mini-map there. Uh, so we can tell we didn't miss any. There's no icons Still on the mini-map for making noise. All right, shit. come in here and grab loot from this chest. This will give you the sterile bandages yes, that you need for Boozer's arm uh, for this mission. But you get also get Nero injectors. Nero injectors are used to increase your health, stamina, and focus. Absolutely the most important are stamina and focus. Health, really in the early game, the goal is to not get hit. So you don't need to increase your health straight away. What you need to be increasing is your stamina so that you can run further and faster and increase your focus so that you can make more headshots. Uh, so I'm going to do stamina first. First and foremost. Boom. Stamina is increased. Now, other benefits to unlocking these Nero stations. All right. You will get a bed that you can rest in. 
This way you can run the clock forward from night to day, day to night. That way you don't have to get stuck exploring at night. In the early game, you do not want to get stuck out at night. Uh, you wait until you've got built up a little bit before you try to go out at night. You also get a gun locker where you can change your loadout, refill your ammo. Now be aware you can only use this for items that you, for guns rather, guns that you actually own, something you've purchased from a merchant or something you unlocked uh, by completing storylines. Uh, so it's only stuff you own, not stuff you pick up off the ground, but it's there. You also get healing items that will respawn. All of these Nero stations will have healing items that respawn. So you can use these to keep your health, health topped off. These green ammo cans, they do not respawn. So if you use it, it's gone. And I'm going to save it for later. You also get some crafting materials. All of these Nero stations will have a, at least a handful of crafting materials. And they'll have healing stuff. And then you also have these what's called Ipkatech. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but that's it. It's Ipkatech. And uh, those are used for crafting an end-game weapon. All right. Well, let's take a look at the map here. It's 2.07 p.m. A lot of people don't realize this. There is an actual clock on the map up there where it says the 736 days gone. You can see it's 2.07 p.m. with heavy rain. Now, our next place that we're going, we're going to go through this tunnel where Deacon and Boozer go to clear out Nest. This is where the game teaches you to use and craft Molotovs the first time. And right over here is Crazy Willy's, where Deacon goes to get the part for his bike. And right over here is where Boozer got his arm burnt up by the rivers. So we already know this area. We're going to go through the tunnel. And instead of going all the way into Crazy Willy's, we're going to hang a right right here. And then we're going to go north all the way up. So you see this lake up here. You can see this deeply shadowed area with the two islands in it. That's your landmark. What you're looking for is these this little cluster of farmhouses here. We're going to go straight there. But because it is now 2.07 p.m. and we don't want to get caught out at night, go ahead and use this bed to rest. The way this works, if it's daytime, when you rest... It will run it forward tonight, and then you'll rest one more time, and it will run it forward today, and it will be first thing in the morning at first light. And the thing about the weather effects here, sometimes it'll be like cloudy or rainy, and you can't tell if it's day or night. Sometimes it will be a bright moonlit night, and it looks like daytime. So you just use the clock on your map screen to determine what the exact time is, and that way you'll know if it's you know if it's safe to go out and explore a little bit, or if you need to get to a bed somewhere. And again, we're just playing it safe because it's the early game. That's the whole point of this is to get the best possible start with using the fewest amount of resources. Because if you're constantly getting into combat and you know you're constantly dealing with enemies, you're going to be spending resources. There's no way around it. Well, for example, there's some assholes right there. Let's see what we got. Already spotted. Awesome. Uh, I think I can get away from him, actually. I'm not even going to waste my time. Boozer, you there? Hop on the bike and head Boozer to the next loot location. Let's see if we can get past him. Can we get past him? Ah, fuck it. We'll just kill him. All right. So we're going through this tunnel. Again, this is the tunnel where Deacon and Boozer go through and clear out Nest. Uh, it's where the game first teaches you to use and craft Molotovs. We're headed back over into the Bell Map region. Be aware, quite often when you come out of these tunnels, there will be enemies spawning, like that wolf right there. So we're going to dodge this wolf. Definitely not trying to mess with wolves right now. Wolves in this game are total assholes. All right, so we're going to come up here, and instead of going all the way to Crazy Willy's, we're going to hang a right and head this way. I have good news and bad news, okay? Bad news is, yeah, there's an ambush camp right here on the corner. That's the bad news, but there's good news, too. Now you know where this ambush camp is for when you get ready to start exploring this area and clearing camps. More good news. 
the first time you come around this corner, the sniper up here will completely disregard you. He will be focused on these freaks, and he will not bother you at all, so you can drive right past that sniper the first time only. If you come back around this corner later, sniper's going for you. But the first time you're safe, so when you make that turn back there to head up to this loot location, you're good to go. Yeah, yeah, cool. Alright. Now, on the way to our next little hidden loot location... Yeah, thanks. I, that really amazed me when, me when I found that, because I hate those snipers. Alright, so on the way to our loot location, you pass right by another Nero facility. We're going to go ahead and activate this Nero facility and get the next injector. All right. See if there's a, see if there's another okay, so I know just from practice, the fuel can is right here in the back of this army truck here. So we're going to grab the fuel can. Since I have a can of fuel in my hand, I'm going to top off the bike. All right, we top off the bike. And again, you can locate your generator by looking for junctions in the power lines. Here it is. I'm going to top it off. We're not going to activate it yet. We still need to disable all of the speakers before we activate it. Good. So, toss the can. All right. There's another reason I like to bring my audience here for the early game. It introduces a new mechanic. Fuses. Some of the Nero facilities will need a fuse replaced. God damn it. So, fuse blown. the way this works, you're going to track right. the last person that had the fuse. Where the hell am I going okay. to get a fuse? You just follow the footprints. Click your survival vision so that you can see the footprints on the ground. And it it's in this tent over here. You can actually see your objective through walls even if you're close enough. So this looks like this Nero guy here was the last person to have the fuse. What's going on? So we're going to track his footsteps. And... You can see it on your mini map, the little line of dots there leads you right to it. Leads you right over to this trailer. And inside the back of this trailer is a chest. What's in the chest? Well, let's see. It's a narrow fuse. Alright, so you grab the fuse. Yes. Run it back over here and place it in the fuse box. Now that you've restored the power system, you can start killing speakers and uh, when you're ready, you turn on the Turn on the power. Okay, so we follow the power lines. We've got speakers on top of the buildings, but none on the light pole. We got a power line that runs over here to this little guard shack. And yes, there's a speaker here, so we're going to disable that real quick. You can actually shoot these speakers to save time. If you have plenty of ammo, you can just shoot them. It's not a big deal. And the line terminates at this light pole with nothing on it, no speakers there. All right, so we got to get on top of this building and start destroying these speakers. Cutting them with your knife is just the most efficient way. It's quiet, it doesn't draw any freaks, and it doesn't cost you any resources at all. Your boot knife is permanent, it never gets damaged. Okay, here's the last speaker on top of the building. All right, now we follow the power line. It branches over here to this light pole, nothing there. It branches over here to this little guard shack, and you can see there is a speaker there. We have another branch in the line that goes over here, terminates at this light pole, and there's nothing on it. So, we've only got the one left. All right. Now we can safely turn on the power here, and we're not going to be drawing freaks with these speakers coming on. All right. So, All right. first thing you want to do is pop in here and grab your Nero injector. Nero injector, just with the doctor. Okay. Now, like I said, stamina and focus are the two most important in the early game. I've already done stamina once, so I'm going to go ahead and do focus. I like to do a lot of tightly controlled headshots, so 
I usually raise my focus up really early. All right, now check this out. You have gained 1,000 XP, which puts you at 2066 of 6550. A lot of new players misunderstand this and are confused by this. They see that 20, 2066 of 6550, and it's like, Hey, I didn't get all the XP. Did I miss something? Did I not perform well in this objective? No, dude, it, you're making it too complicated. You scored 1,000 XP for completing the mission. That puts you at 2,066 XP, and you need 6550 to hit, hit the next level, which 2066 of 6550 is roughly 31%. That's what that means. Okay, now we have also scored 750 trust, and 1,200 credits with the Hot Springs camp. We now have trust and credits with a camp we've never even set foot in, already gaining trust and credits. Off to a great start. Doing the trick. Okay, and you've got a place to rest if you need it. Yeah, yeah, follow the power lines. Uh, also, you'll always have plenty of crafting materials at these locations. The crafting materials will respawn. The healing stuff will respawn. Uh, they'll always be there, and there's a gun locker there for refilling ammo. Okay, now we are ready to head over to the uh, loot location. Again, where we're headed is you find the lake with the two islands in it. Just south of that, there's a little cluster of farmhouses. That's where we're going. Okay, now be aware, this is a heavily infested area. There are a lot of freaks here. You have to get in and get out. Don't want to hang around. Get in, grab your loot, get out. I gotta clear them out. Ooh, All gotta right. Right we'll here. park the bike where we can get away in a hurry. Hey, what's up, brother? Good to see you back. Okay, you come around to the side of the house, find these hay bales, hop up on the hay bales, hop up on the roof, go in through the window. All right. Now, buy us a little time. We're going to use photo mode here. Okay. Now, if I can get the camera focused, you can see there's items in the box and another mine on the shelf. So we're going to snatch up these items here. There's a hatchet here, another med kit, and your first automatic rifle. You know, swap to that automatic rifle, grab some ammo for it. Now, I've never seen these guys come in the window with you. It's, I guess it's possible that they could. I've never seen it happen myself. So we're going to pop out of here, run right back to your bike. If you're running, you can hop on the bike faster. Oh, I'm good, man. I'm having a great evening. How are you, sir? All right. So this broken bridge, you cannot jump this bridge until you have upgraded your bike, but you can go through the creek there. And where we're going is just into this little town. We're going to this building right here in the kind of the upper center of the town. Okay, so we're going to cut through the water here. Yeah, I thought about that. I'm just kind of running through here real quick. Freaker infestations. Okay, there are lots of freaker nests here. Which right means there's here. lots of freaks, but that's okay. <laughs> Hug you too. All right, fight or flight in case there's a bunch of freaks around, but really it's not that big of a deal. All right. I think you need a fire axe to your face. Yes, yes, fire axe to your face. Okay. All right, line it up. Let them walk into it. No, I can't pull it off every time, but line it up, let them walk into it. Line it up, walk into it. No okay, problems. Okay, now I walked five steps and didn't die, so I'm going to save my game. Now, this location right here, if you run around the corner of it, you will see a power, oh, little power relay box here. The blood all over it. Climb up on that. Climb up on the patio cover here. Pop in these open windows. All right. Right here is your first scoped rifle. I personally do not use the crossbow. Give me a rifle with a scope on it, and I am a happy gamer. 
All right, so I'm going to pick up this gear. Now, don't worry about your crossbow. That crossbow will always be available to you at your uh, weapons lockers. So there's no need to worry about leaving it there. It's not a problem. Did finish All right, we got another attractor, out. another frag grenade, all free to pick up and ready to use, another flashbang. These doors, they are locked from the outside. They can only be opened from the inside. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of missions in this area. Okay, but once you open this door from the inside, you can now go through it freely at any time. So we come back out here, and you can go into the next room right beside it. And there's a few more goodies in here. I love the pipe bomb in the toilet. I don't know if y'all know about the old, uh, you know, the putting a cherry bomb in the toilet to blow up the toilets at school. But yeah, that's, that's awesome. All right, you got some loot on this guy. He's got a pickaxe, but it's not a very good weapon. Uh, got some loot on this corpse here. Another med kit laying right here, and another fully crafted Molotov right here. Uh, you only, no, no crafting required. You just pick it up and go. So we have now been to our four early game loot locations, and check this out, man. We've got, we have a three frag grenades. We're actually full on frag grenades. Can't carry another one already. We got three pipe bombs. Can't carry any more of those. I was already full on uh, Molotovs. Uh, you have to kill people in that. Uh, yes, that is correct. There is a main story mission right across the street from this location uh, in that church over there. Uh, and I've got three actual military-grade proximity mines. I've got one of the craftable proximity mines, proximity bomb. I have two attractor bombs. Uh, again, those make noise to draw the freaks, and then after a few seconds, they blow up. Uh, one attractor and a couple of flashbangs. I also have a full auto rifle, an actual sniper rifle with a scope. It's a crappy one, but still, it's got a scope on it. And I have a fire axe. All right, pop this door open from the inside. You can now come through these doors freely at any time, now that they've been opened. All right. Also, right here, fire trucks. Where do you get fire axes normally? From a fire truck. And yes, they respawn too. No need to waste scrap repairing it. All right, let's grab a little bit of fuel, since there's some fuel right here with inside of us. Top off the tank. There we go. Fuel management is absolutely critical in the early game. What is the difference, mine versus bomb? I never use them. Uh, definitely use them. Uh, they're super cool. The proximity mine, again, that's actual military-grade ordnance. Uh, when you plant these, they're very sensitive. If the enemies get anywhere near them, they will go off, and they have a huge blast radius. Uh, these are the same thing, just slightly less effective. Uh, the proximity bomb, uh, the enemies have to get a little bit closer to them, and they don't uh, blow up quite as large of an area. A uh, blast radius isn't quite as big on them. Uh, fuel can's right over there by the car. <laughs> it did kind of take off flying, didn't it? All right, so we are completely geared up. I've been to all four of my early game loot locations. I, I'm full up on loot just about. I'm going to save my game. Guess what we're doing next? You guessed it. We're going horde hunting. Check it out. I am level two. I've only gotten two Nero injectors. I haven't even been to Tucker's camp yet. Haven't even been to, over there yet. But we're ready. We're geared up. It's time to go kill some hordes. Once you have killed four hordes, you will unlock the SMP9 little full auto pistol. It's, it's basically a little Uzi, a little mi micro Uzi. So there is a horde that spawns. Go back over here to this uh, landmark here, this lake with the two islands. You can just barely kind of see this lava arch right here. That is where their cave is at. Uh, they could spawn anywhere from right over here at this open field. They could spawn down here by the lake. Or they could spawn in this cave here. So let's go see where they're at. You'll normally be able to hear them when you get close. There's this area over here, this mass grave right here. Mass grave site. Okay, this is where they come to feed. No freaks here, so this area is clear. That's what we saw. 
Come on, come on, drive over the corpses. Alright, we're gonna head over here to the lake. See if they're spawned at the lake. Please be at the lake. That's my favorite spot. And there they are. They just popped in. Outstanding. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and save my game before I move in. Now let's get a little bit closer. All right. It's our first horde. And there they are. In all their disgusting glory. All right. These bushes right here. You can hide in the bushes. You have a little bit of elevation. So the higher your elevation, uh, the further you can throw your throne items because you have a, a greater parabolic arc, basically. So what we're going to do, we use a, a tractor bomb. This will make noise, draw them to it, and then it pops. Let's put it right there in the middle. See how they draw to it? Now we're going to put a grenade right in the center of that mosh pit there. Boom. Okay. Horde fight started. Nice. Okay, how many are left? Just that one? Yeah, buddy, you're out of there. Done. Okay, first horde taken out. Shadow Lake Horde. Uh, that earns you 2,000 XP. That earns you even more trust and credits with the Hot Springs Camp. 1,500 trust, 1,200 credits. We have not even stepped foot in this camp yet, and we're already building up trust and credits with them. Also, you got progress toward the Horde Killer storyline. You need to get to, what is it, 10% on the Horde Killer storyline, and that will unlock the SMP9 full auto pistol. The best early game weapon. And that's really what we're trying to do here is get that weapon unlocked. All right, run over here and grab your bounties. 50 Swarmer Ears. Head back up to the bike. Okay, save your game. Okay, now we're gonna head back into the Cascades. I thought the hordes were massive. In the early part of the game, in these two northern areas, uh, sort of, yeah, it's uh, Spawnicus Rex, uh, best early game start. Uh, so in the Cascades here, and in Belknap, these first two starting regions are the smallest hordes. Uh, most of the hordes in this area are 25 to 50, maybe 75-ish. Uh, at the at the most later in the game, you will be facing hordes that are three to five hundred. Uh, so yes, they they do get bigger. Uh, this is the cave where that horde normally sleeps, and I'm going to tell you it is a chore to dig them out of this cave. If you've got attractor bombs and attractors, it can be done. But really, I I prefer to take them out in the open up there like we just did. It, it's actually easier that way. Okay, I see some enemy movement. On the motion tracker here. Okay. Murderous Looks like we've got a survivor rescue. <laughs> this guy's completely oblivious. Like, what What are you doing, dude? You just standing there? Help! 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 You! 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 Help! Correct. There is only one 500 horde. That's a late game uh, story mission. Okay, so if you rescue these dudes, I, I hate these guys, but if you rescue them in the early game, send them all to Copeland's camp because they will give you uh, trust. They give you 500 trust with Copeland's camp. That's not much, but hey, you do three or four of them, and you know you get a quick 2,000 trust with that first camp there, Copeland's camp. Sending them to the other camp, Tucker's camp, will only give you credits. It uh, does not give you any trust, just credits. Know All right, Saint thank John. you. I will look into that. I just keep running. Stay okay, on here's some more crafting materials. Uh, let's see what this raider had on them. A detractor. Nice. Okay, that's actually a really good find in the early game. All right, so save the game. Hop on. Where we are headed next, uh, we're going to head back to this Nero checkpoint that we just unlocked, and we're going to go through this tunnel and head back into the Cascades. Right here at the corner in the quest marker line, 
That's where we're headed. Some of you may already know that location. <laughs> yeah, I figured somebody would. <laughs> A most hated location in the early game. Alright, head back toward this Nero camp. And top off the fuel for the bike. Take a look at the clock, see if we need to rest for a little while. Oh, is this dude really going to follow me all the way from up there? Alright, brother, bring it on. Yeah, come on, buddy. Don't be shy. Yeah! You know what's fixing to happen. Asshole. Alright. Definitely make use of the environment. Alright. Top off the fuel tank. Ooh, we were a little bit low, weren't we? Alright. Oh, toss the can. Well, let's see what time it is. It is now 2.04 p.m., because we have a little ways to travel. <laughs> repetition, repetition, repetition. That's pretty much all it is. All right, because we do have a ways to travel, uh, I'm going to go ahead and rest. I know some people... Oh, hello, steel door. Don't run into the steel door. Uh, some people like to say that it's, it's boring to play this way, resting a lot in the early game, not going out at night. That's the whole point. This is the early game. This guide is intended to help new players get through the early game, which is the hardest part of the game. Don't be caught out at night. Just it that's the that's the smartest, most efficient way to play. Don't let yourself get caught out at night. Now, of course, once you're leveled up and you've got some skills and you've got some weapons, don't sweat it. You know, you can take pretty much anything the game throws at you, but right now, don't get caught out at night. And that's really another reason to unlock all of these Nero, uh, all of these Nero locations that you find. Yeah, I mean, if you stay on top of your gas, you're not going to run out. Just there's gas cans everywhere. There's fuel pumps everywhere. Uh, there's fuel at the O'Leary Mountain Safe House. It's. I mean, I know people say they run out of gas all the time. I don't really know how. Okay, we're going to run through this tunnel here. Just another reason that I go through here early. Oh, really? Okay, well, come here. Follow me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, come on. Don't be shy. Come say hello. Meet my little friend. All right. Again, pro tip. Take advantage of the environment. Use your environmental tools. Okie dokie. Stupid headlight. Now, I was saying, um, before I was so rudely interrupted by that freak, uh, go ahead and do these tunnels so that you can clear travel routes between uh, the Cascades and Belknap, because you're going to be running back and forth between Cascades and Belknap quite a bit anyway, so it's best to go ahead and uh, clear these tunnels early on. Okay, I really do wish they would add a feature to remember your headlight settings. The headlight is so bright that it's blinding. I actually prefer to just keep it turned off. I rarely use it. All right, so we've got some more buttholes here. And I do not have... Yeah, yeah, come on. Didn't have any explosives there, so eh, I'll just smack him in the face with an axe. Okay, move this next truck. It's another reason I like to pick up that fire axe early on. Uh, that really is the best weapon, the best melee weapon you can get in the early game. I know it's got low durability, but it only took a few hits to kill him. So it's really not that big of a deal. And if you know where more of them respawn at, you can always just go grab another one. 
All right, another thing, be aware of this. As you exit these tunnels, there's usually going to be some enemies spawn. It's very common. And I'm going to be completely honest with you. If it's a, if a sniper spawns out here or if some wolves spawn out here, I'm just going to reload that last save game. I am not trying to bother with those types of enemies this early in the game. Uh, it's just it's too resource intensive to mess with those guys early in the game. But we have arrived at our destination. This is the Death Train Horde. You have a horde that's up here in these boxcars for this train right above a Nero facility. It also happens to be right above a highway that you have to travel along t dozens of times for the early game missions. So I like to take these guys out pretty early and unlock that Nero facility too. And here is how I do it. Hello. I told you. Wolves. Yeah, wolves. Not going to mess with it right now. We're loading that previous save game. This is why we make frequent saves, okay? If necessary, just load your save game. Don't sweat it. Not going to make a big deal out of it, and I'm not going to sit here and spend a whole magazine from my rifle trying to kill a couple of wolves, alert the horde, and pull the whole damn horde down on me. Just not doing it. That's part of conserving your resources. All right. So, let's try this again. Does the axe one-hit wolves? Hmm, cool. I may try that. Mass grave. Why'd they bury this shit? I usually just you know, avoid them until I've unlocked the SMP9. Once I unlock that SMP9, I stop running from combat. All right, I like to pull in beside this green tractor here. <sighs> All right, and for my new players or folks who just aren't confident with these hordes yet, take a look at the area around you. I've got an explosive barrel right there. I've got an explosive barrel right there. I've got explosive boxes here and here. And I have this massive explosive tanker truck right here in the middle. All right, so let's take these guys out. Oh, did I save my game? I don't remember if I saved my game. Let's make sure we saved our game. Okay, here we go. Now, something to be aware of. You can kind of see them under the truck there. There's some stragglers. There are so many freaks in those boxcars up there that sometimes they will cluster up and fall out of the boxcar. Yeah, it's a nice feeling, ain't it? All right, this is another opportunity to use your photo mode. Pop into photo mode, tab over to field of view, max out that field of view, raise up the camera, and look, right there, I can see another freak coming around that corner. You can kind of peek all the way around the corner most of the time. Okay, so you just kind of chill for a sec and wait for these stragglers to regroup with the rest of the ward. Once it, you don't have to wait until they stop completely because they're just going to keep falling out of the train cars. But once you've got a, a little bit of clearance here, we're going to move forward into these bushes right up here by the train. Okay, let this fella get back in with the rest of the horde. I'm going to check around that corner again. There's nobody immediately coming around the corner down there. Okay, so we're going to make use of these proximity mines that we picked up earlier. I'm going to plant one right on the tracks up here. Just waiting for that waiting for that fellow right there to get clear. Okay, here we go. Put one right in between these. We're going to put a frag grenade right inside one of these train cars, the first train car. Put a frag grenade right in there with them and bail. Time to run. Hide in these bushes here. All right, that's going to get their attention. That's going to draw them out. They're going to trigger that bomb right there, and then we're going to use an attractor. Nice. Okay. Take off running. Put it right here by the front tire of the truck. Break line of sight and create distance here. You've got to break line of sight and create distance. 
then they will go for the attractor. They're all drawn to that attractor. Okay, now, use photo mode. Make sure they're all gathered up around the truck. I can tell I've got the whole group. There are no stragglers just wandering around. They're all clustered up by that truck. So, let's pop the truck. Death Train Horde. Done deal. We have maxed out our XP for this level. We have gained trust with Copeland's camp. And we've made progress on the Horde Killer storyline. Made progress toward unlocking the SMP9. Yeah, man, I got my audio fixed. <laughs> and we got a new skill point. Right on. Okay, so let's take a quick look at skills. I always start with Focus Shot. That's under Ranged Skills. I start with Focus Shot. The very next skill that I get is Field Repairs. Uh, this will allow you to repair your melee weapon using scrap. You just spend a few pieces of scrap and you can fix your melee weapon. And that is another reason I say this Fire Axe is the best weapon in the early game. Because, yes, it has low durability, but now I can fix it just by using a few pieces of scrap. All right, we'll come over here and grab the bike real quick, and then we'll go pick up our ears. All right. I walked five steps and didn't die, so I'm saving my game. Come over here, pick up all these ears for bounties. Oh, great, we've got some more assholes. Outstanding. Pick up your ears from up here. Death trains. Yeah, but I see you. Oh, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, Better dodge. All right, let's see if we can deal with these raiders real quick. Okay, this one does not have a ranged weapon. It's just two melee weapons. Line it up. Oh, no! All right, so the idea is to line it up and let them walk into it. There we go. Oh, this one has a ranged weapon. All right, let me get some cover. Break line of sight. Okay, now, photo mode. That's your tactical camera. Where's she at? She's right down here in front of this other set of bushes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming for you. Yes, yes, I know how to regain stealth. Thank you. you afraid of a little old gal like uh, no, not really. Ooh, brutal. All right. So, now let's go clear this Nero uh, facility here, and we will move on to the fourth and final horde. Walked five steps and didn't die, so I'm saving my game. Pick up some scrap since I just repaired my melee weapon. Be aware there's a good bit of scrap uh, behind the facility. A lot of people never think to look back here. They just kind of worry about up here at the Nero facility itself. But there's a good bit of scrap over there and crafting materials. All right, got a fuel can handy, so I'm going to top off my tank. Oh, here we go. that should be it. Got that. Now, this is another facility that introduces a new uh, mechanic. You have to push this truck up against the building so you can climb up onto the top of the building because your generator is fenced in uh, behind barbed wire, and you can't climb over that. So I'm just going to top the, uh, toss the gas can over there by the generator so we can use it here in a second. Push this truck down to the building so that we can climb up on it. Oh, this takes forever. Come on, dude. Push harder. Push harder. Okay, there we go. All right, so hop up on top of the building. You can locate the generator by looking for the junction of power lines. You see it, it's right there in front of us. So one branch of power line comes over here to this building. Take out all the speakers on top of the building. Try to be thorough and make sure that you don't miss any. 
Uh, later in the game, once you've got some decent weapons and you're not like running from combat all the time, uh, it is a fun tactic to use those speakers to draw freaks in. I don't really do it myself because I just I, I prefer to be more efficient. Uh, this difficulty mode is hard too. Uh, the only reason I did hard to instead of survival is purely convenience uh, so that I can make this video a little faster and easier uh, with some fast travel and less just driving around because in survival mode there's no fast travel whatsoever. Okay, so we're following this power line over to this light pole. No speakers there. Follow the power line to this guard shack. Speaker has been disabled there. No speaker here. Follow the line over here, no speaker, and it terminates at this light pole with no speaker there. So, where's our next junction in the power lines? Right over here. All right. Get where you can actually see it. Uh, follow the line down to this guard shack. Okay, there's a speaker. We got to go deal with that speaker. Okay, take this speaker out. Uh, those raiders had a little ambush set up for me, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> Idiots. All right. So here's another junction of power lines. No speaker there. Follow it this way. No speaker there. And we got one more right here. No speaker over there. Okay. That should be all of our speakers. So we're going to go ahead and activate this Nero facility. And I'm not worried about my health too much because I know there's healing items inside this facility here. That's the only reason I'm letting it ride at 49 health points. Alright, pick up the can. Fuel up the generator. Okay. Crank it up. And we're in. Here comes our next Nero injector. There really better be something in here with all this trouble. Uh, let me go ahead and heal up real quick. Med kit. Again, these do respawn. Uh, it's just another reason to unlock as many of these Nero facilities as you can. You get uh, health items that Nero respawn. Injector. Just what the doctor ordered. Uh, yeah, right? <laughs> Always save before you start the generators. That's not a bad idea. Uh, the only reason I don't is because I'm really thorough about tracking down the power lines. Uh, so I, I generally know that I've disabled all the speakers before I start. Okay, so uh, unlocking this neural facility got us a little more XP. Got us even more trust and credits with Copeland's Camp. Well, and a place to rest. Loot that we can pick up. Uh, if you are brand new to the game, these are little micro recorders. Uh, when you activate these, they'll give you some backstory and kind of some world building information. Uh, I will leave those for the players to discover on their own. I try to keep these as spoiler free as possible. All right, head to the bike and we're going to track down our next horde. And earlier, I believe I misspoke. I think I said we were headed to the fourth and final horde. That is not accurate. We're headed to the third horde. And where we're going, I'm going to follow this road right up here, back toward the tunnel we just came out of. Instead of going into the tunnel, we're going to turn right and head north. You can see in this kind of shadowed area here at the northern edge of the map, there's a clearing. That's where we're headed. Can you go to the feeding site? I believe so. Um, I uh, I prefer to take them out of these specific locations. I like to do the Death Train Horde down there uh, at the Nero facility. And I like to do this next horde. This is the White King Mine Horde. I like to do these guys while they're still in the mine. Or start that way at least. <clears throat> okay, you just follow the trail over here to this clearing. Once you get into the clearing, you can see to your right, there's a little bridge there, a little wooden bridge. Off to your left, 
there's the mine entrance. So we're going to position the bike. Send recorder as well, like killing them in the cave. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got you. All right. So park your bike where you can make a quick getaway if you need to. Save your game. Now, this little bridge here is actually a pretty good spot to draw them to and narrow them down. Uh, it's a choke point. You know, you force them into a choke point, and you can gun a few of them down right there, but ideally, we're not going to have to do that. Going to place a proximity mine in case I do have to lead them to this bridge. That'll take out the ones that are in the lead before they get to the bridge. That's just a, uh, I don't know. Proactive. All right. King. There is usually one freak right here at the entrance. Not always, but quite often. Try to use a rock to draw him out. Come on, buddy. All right. If he doesn't go for the rock, you got to take him out quiet. You've got to take him out quiet because there's a horde right here around the corner. All right. We're going to use an attractor bomb. We're going to throw it right in on top of the horde, and then we're going to run. All right. Be super careful here. They're right around the corner. It's dark, so it's hard to see, but you can kind of tell there's a spot where the arc changes. And when you find that spot where the arc changes, you know the, the hallway is right there. Slip around the corner. Run. Yeah, man, it's horde killing time. You're going to run to these bushes right here. All right, that went off, and that got their attention. So now we're going to use an attractor, draw them to the mouth of the tunnel. And then we're going to put some... Uh, I've only got one grenade left, so I'm going to use pipe bombs instead. And pipe bombs should work just fine here. So that attractor will draw them to the mouth of the tunnel. Here they come. They'll be clustered up at the tunnel. Put your pipe bomb right in the middle. Boom! How many are left? What do we got left? Uh, still several of them there. Flashbangs will also help to cluster them up. They'll be drawn to the noise. They'll go to the flashbang. When they draw in, put your pipe bomb on them. Okay, now how many are left? We have three left. Three we can deal with. Done. There we go. White King Mine Horde. Okay, that gave us 2,000 XP, put us at 6050 of 830, which is 72% to the next level up. We have now hit level 1 with Copeland's Camp. 8% Horde Killer storyline, so we've almost got that SMP unlocked. Trust has increased, because Co Copeland's Camp is now friendly. That is easy, that's how we do it. Resource conservation, man. All right, we'll go, go over here and pick up our bounties. Grab any crafting materials you may need. Pick up the rest of your bounties. Another reason for doing this horde early on. Here's another injector right here in the cave. Now, if you look at your skill screen, it will show you down at the bottom, down where it says endurance there. It will show you your health, stamina, and focus. And you can see that I have already increased my stamina a couple times. Focus has fallen behind. So I'm going to... Hello! Nice to see you. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and grab this Nero Injector. And I'm going to do focus this time because my focus has fallen behind. And I don't like that. I, I like to have as much focus as possible. Stamina is cool too. Focus. But... Focus. Gotta have that focus for my playstyle. I like to do a lot of tightly controlled headshots, so gotta have that focus. All right, we're done in here. Pile of corpses. You can tell I've been there. Make sure you snatch up this uh, proximity mine since we did not end up needing it. Walked five steps and didn't die, so I'm saving my game. Now, since we are at level one trust with Copeland's Camp, we can now get some of those first bike upgrades. So just a brief recap here. All we've done, we got to Copeland's Camp and picked up the bike. 
We started at O'Leary Mountain Safe House, went over here and got some loot at the power plant, came down here and got some loot here, came over into Marion Forks. We got some loot here and here, and then we've killed three hordes, these guys up here, these guys right here, and this group right here. And we've already unlocked the next upgrades for the bike, the first upgrades for the bike. So we're going to head down to Copeland's camp and get those upgrades. This is really where the game starts to get fun. Once you get your first couple of upgrades, three focus, then one stamina, two. Yeah, yeah, and that works, especially if you use a lot of focus. And really, myself personally, I would normally uh, increase focus uh, like quite a few times and then start getting some stamina. But that's just because of my play style. Since this is a beginner guide video, I want to keep the balance and the, I want to keep the focus and the stamina balanced as best I can. All right. We are here at Copeland's camp. Check this out. Okay. Don't refuel your bike just yet because we're about to put a tank on it. So go into performance, go into engines. This is the, the crappy little early game engine that you start with. Look at the difference in the speed and durability. Just this one upgrade will add top speed and a significant increase to your top speed and your durability. Oh, yeah, that's well place. worth it. All right. And then gas tank. You also want the gas tank. And it doesn't do a lot. It does not add a lot of capacity, but every little bit helps. So we're definitely doing that, too. Now, for me, that's the only two I get, engine and tank, and until I have some more money here. Uh, but I, my bike, just has to have the matte black paint job. Got to be black. Good choice, man. Good choice. All right. On the frame. Yeah, man. Cool. Got to be black. And then for me... I just, I just have to go with my shark mouth. I, I, I've tried every other decal. I've tried every other color. Black with the shark mouth, man, that's just the best looking bike to me. All right. Hello. All right. I'm going to go ahead and sell my bounties here. Uh, I haven't heard anything new about Days Gone 2. I know there's a petition going around. Uh, I think we're up to like 30,000 signatures now. Uh, but as you can see, I've already got 160 ears. Uh, so at least three hordes we've done, we've already killed at least 160 freaks. All right. Give us a little mo, little mo money. So since we've got some money here, we'll go ahead and top off my rifle ammo, pistol ammo. And because we are at level one trust now, we can also top off your suppressor if you need it. By any time. Okay, now we've only got one horde to go, but I'm going to go ahead and give everybody fair warning. This part's going to be a little boring. What we have to do is do a loop of resting and fast traveling to make the loot respawn. Uh, just check the uh, subreddit, check the Days Gone subreddit, and man, the, the link for that uh, petition has been posted like probably a dozen times just today. So uh, if you just go take a look at the Days Gone subreddit, you'll be able to find that uh, petition for the Days Gone sequel. You can find that pretty easily. All right, but again, what we're doing here, we got to get our loot items to respawn. Uh, I am now a bit low on supplies after killing these three hordes, so I'm going to have to top off on my supplies before I go for the final horde. I'm not going to just go in guns blazing and try to mow them all down with the machine gun that, that, or with this crappy little automatic rifle. It's not going to work. Uh, it's just going to cause a lot of frustration. That's exactly the kind of thing that frustrates people with this game in the early hours of the game. Is It's, it's not possible to take on the hordes with your regular weapons. You've got to go seek out and explore and find these little uh, hidden loot locations. Or just watch my videos and I'll show you where they're at. You know. All right. Okay. Let's go. Okay. We've made it daytime here in the Cascades. 
I'm going to fast travel to uh, Belknap region, one of those Nero facilities that we opened in Belknap. I'm going to fast travel over there, sleep a couple days there, head back here, and that should have caused the items to respawn. They, I, Unfortunately, I have not been able to get consistent results. Let me go ahead and top off the tank before hey, we leave. Uh, I have not been able so, to man. get consistent results. I've actually tested this pretty thoroughly. If anybody has any more information, please add it in the comments here. Let me know. I can't get stuff to respawn reliably. I have to just do a loop of fast traveling and resting. And after generally, I don't know, four to five days, uh, then everything will respawn. I bought the device that gives you two extra buttons. Ah, outstanding. That sounds cool. Huh. That does sound cool. I don't... I mean, I, I'm used to using the PlayStation controller itself. I've been using a PlayStation controller or an Xbox controller shit, for decades now. But, uh... That sounds cool. All right. So we fast traveled to a different region. We went from the Cascades over to uh, Belknap. We're going to camp two days here. And then we'll go back to the Cascades and hopefully everything will be there. Yeah, I'm sorry. There, there's just no way around it. This part is a little bit boring, but there's a reason for it. Um, the items at those loot locations, they will respawn. You just have to give it a little bit of time, hop around a little bit, and uh, you can go back and get free grenades, free proximity mines, you know, all kinds of, all kinds of goodies. Just got to wait for them to respawn. Right on, thanks. Who's ready to go back at it? <clears throat> Almost done here. Shouldn't take too much of this. Grab some shot eye. Okay, so that's what, a day and a night. We'll do one more to make it daytime again. We'll head back over to uh, the Cascades. Let's go. One more time. Here we go. This will make it daytime. We'll run back over to the Cascades. And uh, I'll go ahead and check one of the locations. If it has not respawned, then we shouldn't have to do but maybe one more day of rest. And that should take care of it. Like I said, if anybody can come up with a consistent method of making this happen every time and, and take the guesswork out of it, man, I'd love to hear it. Okay, let's head back to the Cascades and see what happens. I'm going to top off the fuel for the bike again. Oh, right on, yeah. Oh, the more people we can get on there, the better. Like I said, I think it's already up to like 30,000. Last I checked. <clears throat> that was earlier this morning, so it's probably already uh, gone up from then. Okay, let's head over to the Little Bear Lake Nero checkpoint. Uh, because there, one of our loot locations is right here behind that checkpoint. So let's go there first, see if the stuff has respawned. Okay. Gonna run down there and check, see if our goodies have respawned. Again, from this Nero checkpoint, just hang a right. Curve around with the path here. Kind of heavy on the brakes because this is a tight turn. And try to whip the bike around so we can park it where we can make a quick getaway if we have to. And let's take a look in the shack, see if our stuff is there. Outstanding. Okay, good deal. There's another proximity mine. Uh, all right, we're gonna, we're gonna stop off at the O'Leary Mountain Safe House just to fuel up. 
and then we're going to head over here to the power plant again. And again, our primary objective here to get off to a really good start is to unlock the uh, SMP-9 after killing four hordes. You know, I have asked people who actually live in Oregon if they know what the heck that whistle sound is. Nobody can tell me what that is. Uh, I've heard everything from it's a bird to it's some kind of cicada. I just, I don't know, man. doesn't sound like any kind of bird or bug I've ever heard. I've never heard a bird or bug that sounds like a bottle rocket going off. Hello. Those traps will tear your bike up pretty bad, so... If I were doing less talking and more gaming, I would have seen that. Alright, I'm going to head up here to the O'Leary Mountain Safe House because we have an infinite source of fuel up here. This is kind of cool. A lot of people don't know this. Uh, if you actually pull up right beside the pump, all you got to do is hit the red circle beside the pump, and you can fill it up from right there on the bike. You don't even have to get off the bike. Okay, uh, since we are here, I'm going to go ahead and repair the bike uh, just real briefly here, and because I know there's some scrap laying around, let's see, what's that, uh, sounds like fireworks, I thought it'd be a timer letting you know it's getting dark, yes, there is actually a clock, if you look at the, uh, map screen up there where it says the number of days gone, 741 days gone. Right beside that, there is a clock. It is now 9.38 a.m. with heavy rain. So there is a clock that lets you know when it's getting dark. And let's see, somebody said, go ahead and do the mission. Uh, not just yet. I'm going to hold off on that. Uh, again, we're just trying to get the best early game start here. That's the purpose of this mission. I'm sorry, the purpose of this video is to just get us off to a really good start. Okay, we replenished our scrap, topped off the tank, walked five steps and didn't die, so I'm saving my game. Okay, and now we're going to head down to the, uh, yeah, all right, everybody wave hi to Boozer. Everybody wave hi to Boozer. Hi, Boozer. All right. Got to say hi to the Boozer, bro. Eh, he'll be all right. I got him the medicine. He'll live. Okay. Look for these log piles with the uh, turned over truck and this little hill that's overlooking the logging camp. Stay to the left. Dodge the rocks and trees. Oh, great. Wolves. Man, am I going to have to reload my save game? Really? I don't think so. If the wolves come at us, I think I'm just going to take them out with the axe like somebody suggested a minute ago. Are we going to have to deal with the wolves? We're going to have to deal with the wolves. Outstanding. All right, let's see what happens. No, it takes more than one hit, bud. What was that, three? All right. I don't know about all this. Damn. Okay. Go ahead and heal up. See, I knew I should have just loaded my save game. Stupid wolves. All right, let's die. That's awesome. Oh, I hate wolves. Yeah. Nope. Just not doing it, folks. Got a save game. Let's despawn those wolves. Oh, it takes one hit on easy? Yeah, brother, we're not on easy. <laughs> this is actually uh, hard two, I believe. Hard two is my favorite because it is challenging, but you can still fast travel. So, okay. <sighs> Go around the logging camp. Look for this power line here with the boulder beside it. Come down to the end of 
this uh, line of rocks right here. Stop your bike here. Save your game. And look to your left. If that car is there, if that blue car is there, there is a raider ambush waiting on you. You can actually see the raider behind the vehicle. Okay, so we're going to launch a counter ambush. We're going to loop around behind these guys and take them out before they see us. Well, start taking them out before they see us. Raiders, damn it. Yep, yep, yep. Waiting to jump me? Huh? Okay, when you get to the bend in the road where you have a clear line of sight on the power plant, move over here, pop your tactical camera. You can clearly see the sniper crouched down by the rocks there. You can clearly see the guy crouched down by the vehicle. And if you look off in the distance, you can see two more down there by that tree and one over by the rock. So we know there's at least four enemies right here all dead ahead of us. So, we'll try to take them out as quiet as we can to start. Yeah, you thought you were going to turn around and spot me. Okay, time to go loud. <sighs> yeah, those wolves got me all frustrated and shit. Yep, yeah. ah, fuck it. I'm just going to chop your head off with an axe. Alright. See if we can't do this a little cleaner. There we go. Nope. <laughs> All right. Where's my concentration at? Come here. Yes, yes, come here. There we go. Line it up. Let them walk into it. There we go. That's how it's done. All right, now that I'm done embarrassing myself, let's grab our loot. Cool, pipe bomb. Right on. Okay, any more loot? There we go. All right, head back over to the bike. So the idea with uh, those headshots there, you just kind of line it up and let them walk into it. And I'm not trying to claim I can do it all the time, but that's the technique that you use. Line up the shot, let them walk into it. All right, I walked five steps and didn't die. Saving my game. Head back down here to the power plant. Loop the bike around so you can park it for an easy getaway if necessary. Tow trucks always have fuel. Alright. And again, where we're headed is up here to the top of this platform, up here at the, the very highest point. <laughs> That was calm. <laughs> I was all frustrated and stuff. Those wolves pissed me off. <laughs> Once I get the SMP9, it, it's not necessary to run from combat anymore. Oh, I've already got it. Yeah, I've been here once and picked up all the loot here. Uh, that's why we're, we were doing the resting and fast traveling earlier was to make everything respawn. Okay, so I'm full up on those. Uh, I've got flashbangs and frag grenades. Need that health kit after missing all those headshots earlier. Okay, I've already got a better melee weapon than that. Here's another attractor bomb and a pipe bomb. And, uh, yes, yeah, well, there's the 22 there, but I'm already running the, uh, the automatic rifle, the AK. Okay, so let's take a look at our loot. I have two grenades, three pipe bombs, still got proximity items, and I have an attractor bomb. I really need at least one more attractor to do this last horde. The, you're going to need an attractor bomb, an attractor, and at least one frag grenade. So I do need to go to my other locations. I was going to see if I could maybe cut a corner 
and skip one of those loot locations, but I do need another attractor. All right, save it. We're gonna head over here to these loot locations in Marion Forks in the Belknap area. Again, where we're going is this uh, farmhouse right here. And we're gonna go right into town and hit this uh, Marion Forks Hotel right here. So we're just gonna fast travel to, oh, fast travel's locked. I'll have to get out of this infestation zone. Um, okay, we'll just have to drive west a little ways and we can get out of the infestation zone pretty quickly. That's right, there's an infestation at the logging camp that we passed a moment ago, so you gotta get outside of the infestation zones before you can fast travel. It's another good reason for clearing the Freaker Nest is because it opens up fast travel routes. Bet that's not far enough, is it? Nope. Nah, screw it. Okay. Hey, I'm good. I'm making it. Living the dream, man. Isn't that what they say? Alright, just gotta get out of this infestation zone at the logging camp here. That should do it. Maybe? No, probably not. Come back later and burn out these nests. Uh, I've got a video up on my channel that shows an easy way to get plenty of kerosene to uh, make Molotovs for burning out the nest. So in the next segment of this video, probably not tonight, in the next segment I'll most likely get to that part. Hey Boozer, what's up brother? Okay, now, Marion Forks, we're on a mission. Boozer's going to have to wait. He'll be all right. We got him some medicine already. Okay. 43% uh, on fuel. Yeah, we better take care of that. Park the bike where you can make a quick getaway. Let's see, I walked five steps and didn't die, so I should probably save my game, huh? Okay. Now remember, this location here is inside an infestation zone, so there are generally lots of freaks here. You want to park the bike? Yes, uh, I'll get to that later. We're just not doing that in this video. We're just trying to get off to a good start with plenty of gear, knock out a few hordes. Okay, run in here. Get the goodies from the box. Uh, I've already picked up the ammo can over there. All right, we gotta get back to the bike as quick as we can. Time to go. Okay, again, you cannot jump this bridge. And man, I don't even feel like messing with that big group of freaks over there to rescue this guy. How many are there? Is it, is it not many? Okay, we'll help him out. No, not that. Yeah, okay. There we go. It's about to be a bunch of freaks, isn't it? I should have just let this guy die. Okay. Yeah, come on, dude. Let's get this over with. All right, hey, here hey, we go. Hey. It's okay. You're not going to make it out here. I know where there's a camp. 
camp? Yeah, yeah. Where? Show me. Where? I'll, I'll go. I'll go. Okay, I'm going to send them. Well, right now I haven't been to Tucker's camp, so I have to do Copeland's camp. Uh, but I usually send them to Copeland's camp anyway because you get trust Peaceful with Lake. Copeland's camp. Copeland. Tucker's camp will only give you credits, which really isn't that big of a deal uh, if you're killing hordes and getting bounties and stuff. Yes, yes, you're welcome. Tell I get out of here. Deacon, Deacon okay, Go away, kids. You bother me. All right. Oh, can I can I please go get my loot now? All right. Has my fire axe respawned? Outstanding. No need to waste scrap repairing that axe. Okay, and again, since we have unlocked these doors earlier from the inside, you can now pass through them freely at any time. Flashbang. The tractor and grenade. And really, that attractor was the only thing I really needed over here. Grab some ammo. Uh, sir, can I get you to smash through that door, please? No. Outstanding. What, Deacon, you've been drinking or something, brother? All right, uh, don't need the Molotov, don't need the med kit, and I don't need the pipe bomb. Okay, let's go. Oh, he's just not going to do it, is he? Thank you. At least do something that looks like a badass. You're making me look bad on camera, sir. All right, here we go. Uh, we can't fast travel. I know, who keeps putting those supplies in there for me? Whoever it is, I uh, I want to shake their hand. Okay, we we'll get out of this uh, infestation zone so we can fast travel back to the Cascades. Love it. All right, we got some free loot. Let's go kill another horde. I know that's what everybody's here to see, so let's do that. All right, going to go ahead and locate the fourth and final horde from Copeland's camp. If you look at the lake, not the stream where it opens into the to the stream here, but the northern part of the lake. Put your cursor right there on the northern part of the lake and move east, straight east, and you will come to in the edge of the fog here, there is a little bridge that runs north and south. Just north of it is a bridge that runs east and west. And then you have this bridge that runs north and south. The horde is right here in this cave, in this little shadowed spot right here. So you want to find this little bridge that runs north and south. Put your cursor on the northern end of it. If you put your marker at the southern end of it, uh, really? Uh, I guess it's because I'm up north. But anyway, sometimes the path will lead you up this way, and it'll lead you right past the horde, and it'll wake the horde up before you're ready. You don't want that. Always come in from the north. All right. Oh, yeah, we're going to fast travel to Copeland's camp. Oh. All right. One of the bikers. Let him in. Yes, do. How's it going, D? I've still got a little bit of money here, so I'm going to go ahead and top off the tank. And we're going to rest until morning. We'll head out at first light and go get that next ward. Again, still this early in the game, I do not like to get caught out after dark. It's just not an efficient way to handle things. Later in the game, it's fun to go out after dark and just blast all the freaks that you find. But this early with these crappy weapons, nah, man, I'm just not doing it. There's no reason to be caught out after dark. There's We've unlocked plenty of places to go rest, so you know, it just doesn't make any sense at this point in the game. I was ready to go back at it. So it looks like it's, what, a bright moonlit night? 8.05 p.m.? Okay. I'm just going to grab some shot eye. Ugh. 
<laughs> yeah. It's it's kind of kind of like a couple of spiral staircases on top of each other. It just kind of loops around a couple of times. All right. Okay. Let's go. All right. It is now 7:04 in the AM. So it's first light. We're going to head out and deal with this last horde. We're going to embarrass them in front of their friends. Uh, to tell the time, if you look at your map screen up in the top right of the map where it shows the number of days gone, 742 days gone, there's a clock right beside it. It is 7.09 a.m. Uh, with clear weather. Yep. Yeah, it's right there on the map. I think I'd see you around so much. Damn it. Yeah, seriously. In, in the early game, it's really just not worth being out after dark. Uh, okay, so again, we're going to head east from Copeland's camp to this little bridge that runs north and south right here. And that's where our final horde is at. That is the Proxy Falls horde. Okay, when you head toward this little bridge with the roof on it, sometimes enemies like to spawn right around here. Let's see if I can get away with saving my game. No? Somebody's already aware of me. Outstanding. Alright, let's see what happens. It may be wolves, it may be freaks, it may be raiders, you just never know. Let's see if I can get a save game in here. No? Not gonna let me have it? No, no, no. Oh, sniper. Ah, uh, awesome. Okay, oh, what do we have here? Is that... God, no, man, I'm just not messing with wolves right now. Oh, did I not make a save game before leaving camp? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Well, and that, folks, is why you should save your game all the time. Stupid wolves. Oh, all right. One more time. So, another pro tip here. Uh, if you have smoke bombs, you can use the smoke bombs to hit the wolves. It will actually stun them, and they will start throwing up. They will stop right where they're at and literally start throwing up. It's, it's absolutely hilarious, uh, and it's extremely effective, too. Uh, it will stop them dead in their tracks, and they start to vomit right where they're standing. Uh, so a lot of times if I'm on foot and I get ambushed by some wolves, I will uh, pop a smoke bomb on them, and it stops them dead in their tracks. I got up, got my car, tried to get into town. Oh, I'm just going to close my eyes for this. Started riding. Yeah, when I realized that Iron Mike had assigned Schizo as his head of security, I lost all faith, all faith in Iron Mike. I'm like, man, seriously, how could you make such a terrible... How could you be such a bad judge of character? Seriously? Hmm. I was ready to go back at it. But it is what it is, I guess. Okay, now. It's early morning. Check the map again. There's your clock. 7.06 a.m. Let's see if I can do this without stumbling into any wolves again. Now, once I get the SMP9 unlocked, yeah... <laughs> Wolves are not a problem anymore. They try to ambush you, you just bust out your SMP9 and ruin their day. But it's just too early for that. Damon. Okay. Save your game. Let's go. Do I still have my marker set? Of course not. Well, you know, I would say in the Apocalypse, you kind of need to be a good judge of character. Not judging people's character, well, we'll get people killed. It's just that simple. Uh, and, you know, that's kind of what happens, but, you know, it is what it is. Alright, again, little bridge with the roof on it. 
save the game. There's quite often enemies will spawn right in this area as you come through that bridge. Also, it's pretty common for enemies to spawn right here. Uh, the raiders will often have a wire trap going from this wrecked out blue car to this ambulance. So just when you come around that corner, be aware. You need to look out for a trap there. All right, we're on the way to the last horde. Okay, these little stone bridges, that's your landmark. Right up here is the little bridge that runs uh, north and south. So we're going to stop here. Save your game. This bridge here is also a pretty good spot. You can use it to funnel them into the bridge and uh, put some bullets in them there. But uh, I have a slightly better method that I'm going to show you now. In that particular location uh, at the uh, power plant, if you see that blue car off to the left, there is definitely an ambush there. Because uh, what they try to do is they try to push that car into the road and hit your bike as you're going down the road. Uh, but, you know, if you, if you know to look out for that, then you can spot them before they spot you. Now, when you come to do this horde, if you see human enemies wandering around in this marauder camp, there we go. Take these guys out. Oh, no. yeah. Nope, not doing it. You're fixing to wake up the horde. Not having it, man. Don't come in here and wake up my horde. That's just not a nice thing to do. I will let the freaks eat you. Okay. Yeah, if you see human enemies down there, just reload your save game. Uh, despawn the enemies. Okay, here's the horde. So, you want to start with a attractor bomb. The horde is not too deep off in the cave, so you can throw it in, just throw it as far as you can get it, and run. Head for these bushes downhill here. Okay, that got a few of them. Now use an attractor to pull them out. And then once we get them pulled out, we're going to use some grenades. They should all come out for this attractor. Here we go. There's the mosh pit. Put a grenade right in the middle of them. Proxy Falls Horde. Done. Okay, now that also got us 100% toward the next level up. Got us a little more trust and credits with uh, Copeland's Camp. Oh yeah, I hate that rope across the road trap. That's so annoying. Uh, and once you get your engine upgraded where the bike runs faster, <laughs> you almost never have time to see that trap before you're already running into it. Now we are Horde Killer 10%, and we have unlocked the SMP9. This right here was the whole point of this video, to get you to unlocking the SMP9 as early as possible. And we got a new skill point. Now, again, we'll touch on skills briefly here. I always get focus shot first under ranged. Then I go to field repairs and get, I'm sorry, we go to melee and get field repairs. Next up, I actually like to get my survival skills. There's a reason for this. I will just kind of pick and choose my way across until I have carry that weight. Once you get carry that weight, it will double all of your carrying capacities for crafting items, uh, crafting materials, craftable items. So you'll have more items to make bombs. You can carry more bombs. Uh, you know, all this stuff that I've been leaving behind, I could have been picking all that stuff up if I had carry that weight. Uh, so I go ahead and I work my way over to carry that weight. And then... I will start working up to the bigger skills like up the ante to increase your uh, ammo capacity. This will double the amount of ammo that you can carry. I like to get head rush because this will give you health 
for every headshot. Uh, and once I get this skill, that's generally how I keep my health full. I rarely ever even have to use a, a healing item because I'm just making headshots to fill up my health. And under melee skills, the most important ones here are, again, field repairs, hard hitter that increases the damage of your melee items, home run, which also increases the damage of your melee items, and executioner. Executioner will allow you to do a stealth attack, a stealth kill on the elite endgame freakers, uh, enemies like the Breaker and the Reacher. Um, you can legit just sneak up on them and do an actual sneak stealth kill. You can also stun them with a smoke bomb or a flashbang grenade. And once they've been stunned, you can just right up, run right up on them and stealth kill them. So Executioner is a really good skill to have later in the game. Yeah, that's fun stuff. I love that skill. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and start working my way up through the survival tree so I can get carry that weight. And I'm going to start with Hawkeye. What this does, this will put all plants, mushrooms, herbs, and stuff that will now show on your mini-map. Also, if you're into using the crossbow, uh, that skill will put the cedar sapling trees on your mini-map. So it'll make it a lot easier to find ammo for your crossbow, too. Okay, that was our fourth and final horde. Again, note... I'm only level four. I haven't even been to Tucker's camp over here in the Belknap area. Haven't even stepped foot in Tucker's camp yet. Haven't done any of those beginning missions, uh, you know, get the box of drugs to take to one. Of the, haven't done any of that stuff yet. Uh, and I've already killed four hordes and unlocked the SMP9. So now uh, we're going to take a trip to Copeland's camp and bust out that. SMP9, we'll take a look at it. All right. Go show off my new toy. Yeah, you bet. Yeah, those are some of the best skills. I mean, depending on your play style, you can make any of the skills work for you. Days Gone is surprisingly forgiving on the skills. Um, you don't really have to sweat it too much. You can pretty much just pick whatever skills sound useful to you and you'll be all right uh by the end game you'll have enough skill points to get most or all of the skills anyway all right we'll go to the merchant and okay you can go to the locker go to sidearm it now shows the smp9 take a look at the stats on this thing the damage is better the range is just a hair less, but you know it's a full, fully automatic pistol. Of course, it's not going to have much range on it. It's not a sniper rifle; it's a pistol. Uh, the accuracy is a little bit better, and the rate of fire is absolutely maxed out. It has the highest rate of fire uh, of all these early game weapons. So we're going to go, and also the magazine size. Take a look at that magazine size. It's thirty rounds in the mag, as opposed to your little pistol there that only has ten rounds in the mag. So we are definitely going to go ahead and equip that. I'm not going to fill it up just yet. If you go to supplies, go to sidearm SMG ammo and fill it up, it will fill it up all the way. Another hour? Ah, oh, man, I got to work in the morning. I don't think I could do another hour. We can hang out for a little bit longer, though. Um, top off your suppressor if you need it. That's all we can do here. All right, so let's take a look at this pistol. It hasn't populated yet. All right, the SMP9. Uh, good night. Thank you for stopping by. I really appreciate you coming by and hanging out inside my head for a minute. If you look at the SAF automatic rifle, you've only got 25 rounds in the mag and 50 rounds in reserve. That's the max you could carry. Your sniper rifle, you've got one round in the chamber, five rounds in reserve. SMP9 is 30, magazine size of 30, and... 90 in reserve. It's kind of hard to run this thing out of ammo. It holds a lot of ammo. So that is, again, the whole purpose for why we do the start this way, is so we can get that SMP9 unlocked as early as possible.
definitely got to save the game. Are you going to let me hey, save my game? Okay, auto save. I guess that'll do. Got a few more bounties I can turn in. Get me a little more money. Hey there. Hey, Deke. I, uh, hey, heard you uh, were whatever your name is. I'm just okay. You got a problem. Hey, Deke. Okay, uh, top off the tank. Might as well repair the bike. <sighs> okay, what's next? So that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to get those four hordes knocked out, get the SMP9 unlocked, and uh, get a few Nero checkpoints, get some Nero injectors, some fast travel points unlocked. Uh, really haven't opened up much of the map yet, uh, you know, but we're off to a great start. Uh, <laughs> I think that is it for tonight, folks. Uh, I was scheduled for 8 to 10 my time. Uh, it's now almost 10 o'clock here, and I've reached the point that I wanted to get to for this video. Uh, I want to sincerely thank everybody for stopping in. Really appreciate you guys coming, hanging out with me, uh, playing this game with me that I love so much. Uh, and also, I sincerely hope that this video will help uh, new players who didn't know all this. Oh, hey, what's up? How are you? It's good to see you. Yeah, I'm afraid I'm shutting it down right now, but the full video will be saved on my channel. Uh, so you're welcome to watch that later. Uh, you know, hopefully you learn some cool tips from it. Uh, once again, thank you very much, and I will see y'all later.